Welcome to our five on five. Pleased to be joined today by Merv George Jr., the Forest Supervisor for Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. Good to see you. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good, and, and congratulations on the new position in the midst of your first week on the job. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about where you were previously and how you got here. So before uh, today, or actually this week, I actually was the Forest Supervisor on the Six Rivers National Forest in Northern California. Spent seven years there, uh, four years as the forest supervisor, and three years before that as the deputy forest supervisor. Okay, and, and I, I read that, that you say uh, each forest has a specific personality. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, each forest uh, that I've been on, this is going to be the fourth forest that I've had a chance to be the manager of, uh, has different resources of concern, has different politics. Um, some forests have huge recreation program areas, some are timber forests. Some have more watersheds than others or other endangered species. So, you know, you don't really know exactly what's going to be on the minds of your communities until you get to know them and get to know their issues. And so I, I kind of frame it that each forest has its own personality. Hmm. Okay, and, and you previously served as, as Hoopa Valley uh, Tribal Council Chairman. Uh, how will that help you in this role, you think? So the Hoopa Valley Tribe is also located near uh, the Six Rivers National Forest. Uh, the tribe is a timber tribe. So I've been harvesting trees and dealing with wildfires for many years. And uh, you know, I've kind of found a way to be able to navigate my way around furry critters, endangered species, watersheds, tribal sacred sites, and also to help uh, keep communities safe. Uh, so working with the communities and similar landscapes as what we have here, I think that's gonna help me kind of get to know more about the Rogue River Siskiyou. Okay, and, and while you're new to Oregon, very new, <laughs> we should point out again, um, you're, you're no stranger to Northern California, you're no stranger to the region. Uh, Checo Bar Fire last year, um, you, you probably obviously know a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Uh, how will you approach fire season, if any different from your predecessor? Well, you know, fire seasons seem to be getting longer as a result of warmer temperatures, snowpacks not being able to sustain through the spring and the summer months. Um, quite frankly, there's a lot of fuel loading issues that we have all across our country. And so working with the communities to try to design projects uh, that can reduce some of those fuel hazards, help the economy, be good neighbors, I think is definitely going to be something that will prepare us for fire seasons. Um, fire season's knocking on the door now. So making sure that we have enough staff and firefighters and contractors and partners who help us deal with these large fires but also getting to know the communities. You know, part of my job getting here and being a new guy to the forest is going to be able to get out, meet my staff, and meet the communities that we work with so that it's not an awkward first date when we have a smoke column in the area if we get a fire, and, and you know, uh, this year. Okay, all right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Not much more in a moment, stay with us. Welcome back to our 5 on 5. Again, we're here with Merv George Jr., the Forest Supervisor, the new Forest Supervisor for Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. First week on the job. So uh, you also, you know, talking about your background in Northern California, you went down to the Thomas Fire in Southern California, Santa Barbara area this last year. Uh, how will that help you in managing fires here at Rogue River Siskiyou? So last summer I had the opportunity to be the Forest Supervisor on the Los Padres National Forest, which has some of the busiest fire seasons across the country. Uh, last year I managed the Whittier fire as well as helped with the Alamo, but I was also brought back down in December for the largest wildfire in California history, which was the Thomas fire. So I was able to go down and have the privilege to uh, be working side by side with over 8,500 firefighters from across the country to help keep those communities safe. So I guess it could be said that I'm no rookie to managing fires, especially large ones. Okay. Um, and. I Last, last year, a lot of people were upset at the way Checo Bar was, was handled, uh, especially along the coast. Uh, not, not trying to get you to backseat quarterback here, but how are, are the decisions and how we fight those fires, are those made by you? Are those made uh, in concert with you and people above your head? How does that work? That's a great question. So we, as forest supervisors, which would be called agency administrators, when we have a large fire that needs uh, additional support to help suppress it, we will bring in uh, incident command teams and they're led by incident commanders. But ultimately the decisions are made concurrently with the uh, forest supervisor and the incident commander on all major decisions. So, you know, the interesting thing about large fires is of course local communities are very much interested on strategies and resources of concern. 
And so part of my philosophy in, in working these large fires is to be working side by side with the communities that we serve and keeping them updated in real time. I found that social media has been an excellent tool, um, as well as public meetings uh, in real time, having them often and in areas that could be very remote and making sure that people are informed. Uh, what about salvage? Are those decisions, again, that, that you make, um, you know, especially coming off Chekhov Bar Fire? I mean, there's a lot of work that can be done there. Uh, is that something you're going to be looking at in the near future? Right. So post large wildfires, there's always opportunities to do restoration work. And salvage opportunities are part of that equation. So those types of projects usually get added to what's called a program of work, which essentially is the forest to-do list. And if you're doing your, your, your homework, you're working side by side again with the communities that you're serving because they're the ones that are going to be the most impacted by the projects that we work on. So any salvage uh, particular options would be that decision of the, fo the forest in conjunction with the local communities. Okay, good to see you. Congratulations yeah. on the new position. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming by. I know how busy you are this week. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.